The lower leg back slab or below knee splint is usually applied as a temporary measure to be used while swelling decreases in fractures and soft tissue injuries of the ankle and metatarsals prior to the application of a longer-term circular cast. In this presentation, the application of the lower leg back slab will be demonstrated. The objective of the exercise is to show the application of the lower leg back slab, a plaster splint that will accommodate swelling while stabilizing the fractures or soft tissue injury. The lower leg back slab is indicated for fractures and soft tissue injuries around the foot and ankle. To apply the lower leg back slab, the following materials are needed. A stockinette or tubular gauze bandage. Cotton wool for undercast padding. Scissors. Plaster slabs, generally five layers thick and available in differing widths. A crepe bandage to secure the plaster slabs. And water or another wetting agent. The water should be tepid or lukewarm with an ideal temperature of between 22 and 25 degrees Celsius. It should be noted that colder water or a bandage that is wetter will allow for an increased working time, while warmer water or a bandage that is drier reduces the working time. The patient should be lying face down with the foot of the injured leg over the edge of the table. This position enables more dorsoflexion of the ankle and ensures that the foot remains plantigrade. In the case of severe swelling, the knee may be flexed to an angle of 90 degrees while relaxing both the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscles, which form the Achilles tendon. The second toe should be in line with the tibia to prevent inversion or eversion. The foot should be plantigrade. The proximal border of the lower leg back slab lies distal to the popliteal fossa. An easy landmark is three to four fingers below the popliteal crease. Care must be taken to avoid pressure on the fibular head and neck area so as to prevent pressure to the peroneal nerve that would cause neuropraxia or nerve damage. The distal border is located at the metatarsal heads. To begin, a stockinette is applied and cut slightly longer than the final cast will be. Starting at the distal border, the cotton wool is gently wound on, once around the foot, and then around the ankle in a figure of eight, making sure that the edge does not cut into the 90-degree bend of the ankle. The cotton wool is wound towards the knee, giving an overlap of 50%. The overlap creates a double layer of padding, which is sufficient in most cases. Proximally, the cotton wool extends beyond the planned length of the cast, so that when the end of the stockinette is folded down, the end of the cast will be padded. Additional cotton wool padding is applied to the heel and over the malleoli to protect against pressure points causing pressure sores. It should be kept in mind that when more padding is applied, there will be less support to the injury site. To ensure adequate stabilization, too much padding is to be avoided, even in the case of excessive swelling. The first slab is wettened by pulling it through the water. The excess water is removed by squeezing it slightly. The slab is applied from the posterior side, starting at the proximal edge, going towards the ankle, and over to the distal edge. The extra material is folded back to increase the strength of the slab at the foot.
A second slab, this time from the lateral side, is applied over the foot and around the ankle. A third slab is applied from the medial side to the outer side. To accommodate swelling, the medial and lateral slabs should not meet on the anterior aspect of the lower leg and foot. The ends of the stockinet are folded over the ends of the slabs to create a smooth edge. The slabs are secured in place by winding a crepe bandage around them in the same manner as the cotton wool. It should be noted that the plaster is still soft and can be molded to ensure that the foot is plantigrade by pressing down on the metatarsals, as shown here. The pressure should be continued until the plaster begins to set. However, the plaster will not achieve full strength for 36 hours. The lower leg back slab is not initially intended to be a weight-bearing cast, so the patient will need to use crutches. The foot should be elevated when possible to allow for the swelling to subside more quickly. The application of the lower leg back slab is now complete. The exercises for the patient may now be explained and demonstrated. They include bending the toes and quads exercises.